This video is on the objective, complete the steps of a one mean hypothesis test with the population standard deviation known. All right, so sigma is known, meaning you know your critical values and your test statistic are going to be z scores. All right. And of course, this is with the critical value approach, right? So you're going to be finding critical values, you know, critical Z scores, and set a projection region, and determine and figure out, you know, hey, is my test statistic in the rejection region or not? Now, I've already done a video on this type of problem, uh, so this is number two here. I'm going to do another one, and uh, you're going to see how very similar it is. Now, I'm probably going to do a little less writing this time, and hopefully, watching both of them. No, I'm hoping you've watched the first one for sure, um, and uh, you know you can use these to help you when you're working on the problem on your own. So again, if you're still having trouble or you know you want to see some more stuff, click on more instruction. Look at their videos, you know their uh, their examples, their notes, and hopefully they help you. All right, so I'm gonna read through this and go to a piece of paper and go through all the steps of a hypothesis test. And these are the same steps that are going to be performed every time you perform a hypothesis test. All right, so here, a clinical social worker would like to test the claim that the average amount of time a child spends in the foster care system is different than 10 years. All right, to test this claim at the 5% significance level, the clinical social worker collects the following data on a sample of 30 foster care children and records the length of time they are in foster care. And the following is data from the study. So they give me sample size, 30 kids, sample mean, you know, the sample mean, these 30, these 30 children spent an average of 11.2 years in foster care. And from past data, it is known that the population standard deviation is 2.1 years. Okay, so this is one of the rare instances where you know what the population standard deviation is. You know sigma. All right, so let's test this claim. All right, so I'll put the question down. Bring up some paper. All right, so hopefully you can see this. Now remember, it always starts with a claim to be tested. Now, I'm going to say that mu, all right, this is by averages, population averages. I'll say mu is the average amount of time a child spends, any child, all children, spend in foster care, right, the whole population. And the claim is that this average, this mu, is different from 10 years. So the claim is that mu is not 10, not equal to 10. All right, so when I set up the hypotheses, remember the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, HA, this claim does not involve equality, right? not equal to. So that's going to be represented by the alter alternative hypothesis. So mu is not equal to 10. And then the, the null hypothesis is the opposite, right? the opposite statement, that mu equals 10. And it will always involve equality. And when we go to do our test, this is what we're assuming is true. Right? You assume that the average amount of time a child spends in foster care is 10 years. Right? You assume that. And then we're going to take a sample, you know, find a test statistic, and then determine, you know, do we believe that assumption or not? Are we going to keep it or reject it based on our sample information? Okay, so the hypothesis is, hypotheses are set up. Uh, again, looking at the alternative hypothesis, you know, there's the parameter is not equal to a certain value. That indicates to me that we're performing a two-tailed test. So later when I'm finding critical values, there are going to be two of them, right? one positive and one negative. All right, now this after the claim is stated and the hypotheses are formed, and I know what kind of test I have, we'll uh, re you know, recognize the significance level. 
Now if it's not mentioned, just assume it's 5%. That's a reasonable significance level for most tests. Uh, but this one it is mentioned, this value of alpha. Uh, and it is 5% here, so 0 0.05, 5% significance level. All right, then a sample is taken, and let's take a look at the information about that sample. Now, the sample size, right, in, you know, they looked at 30 foster care children. The sample size is 30. Then the sample mean, right, the X bar for this sample. You know, these 30 kids spent an average of 11.2 years in foster care. So X bar is 11.2. Now, like I said before, this is one of the few scenarios where sigma is a known value. All right, sigma is known to be, now uh, I've got it covered by the, my paper here, but it's 2.1, they said, 2.1 years. Now, since sigma is known by the central limit theorem, or by that central limit theorem for means, uh, the distribution of sample means for, you know, samples of size 30. All right, now I'll go to a bigger paper. I'll make it bigger. Get rid of the calculator here. The distribution of sample means for samples of size 30 would be approximately normal with a mean called, you know, mu x bar and a standard deviation called, you know, sigma x bar, where the mean of these means is the mean of the population. And remember from the null hypothesis, we are going to assume that this mean of the population is 10 years. And the standard deviation of these sample means is the standard deviation of the population, which is known, right, 2.1, divided by the square root of the sample size. So 2.1 divided by the square root of 30 Right, and I'll, I'll approximate that. Let me pull the calculator back up. Pardon me. So 2.1 divided by the square root of 30. So the standard deviation for the distribution of sample means, you know, for all samples of size 30 is approximately, I'll say 0 0.383. Right, but I'll leave it up on the calculator like that. And we could draw a picture. You know, here's a number line representing all possible values of x-bar for samples of size 30. We said the distribution of this, these x-bars is normal. So I'll draw a little bell, bell shape, symmetrical bell shaped curve. Uh, underneath the peak is the mean of the means, which we're saying we're assuming, we're assuming it's 10 right, from the null hypothesis. And then each of these inflection points should be, you know, above one standard deviation away. Now, our sample mean came in at 11.2, so somewhere over here. There's 11.2. Here's here's our x bar, right? Our sample mean. Now the big question is, is that too far from 10 for us to consider that the mean is actually the mean of the population is actually 10? Because if this is too far from 10, we're going to reject 10. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. But if it's not that far from 10, relatively, then we're, then we're not going to reject 10 as our mean. We're not going to reject the null hypothesis. So to answer that question, we find z scores. Right? And this is our test statistic. Right? The test statistic for our sample mean here is a z score. How many standard deviations away from 10 is that value? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to you know, normalize. Right, we're going to look at z scores, change it to the standard normal. Remember the stan you know, standard normal. And the z score of 10 would be 0, because that is the mean. And then what is the z score of our 11.2 there? Right, and I'll, ca I'll call it z test. So what is the test statistic? So z test, and just the z score of 11.2. So 11.2 minus 10, you know, how far away is it from the mean? And then how many standard deviations is that? 
the standard deviation for this distribution is this 2.1 divided by the square root of 30. Right? So I'm dividing by all that. I'll pull that up in my calculator. Now uh, Now 11.2 minus 10 is just 1.2. So I got 1.2 in the numerator divided by, and then my, my, I'll just put in my previous answer because my previous answer was that standard deviation. So the z-score is approximately 3.13. And that's a lot of standard deviations, right? Remember what this means. This means that our sample, right, the sample of 30 kids that this guy was looking at, has a, you know, was in the foster system on average 3.3 standard deviations above the above the the national average, or what we're assuming to be the national average. But based on this, I'm going to guess that that is a bad assumption. Because, you know, remember, usually if you're more than two standard deviations away, you're pretty far from the mean. This sample mean of 11.2 is more than three standard deviations above the mean. That's really far. So I'm going to say that we're probably going to reject 10 as our mean. We're going to reject the null. But let's figure that out. Let's, let's, let's really um, establish that with critical values. All right, so now that I've got the test statistic... Now we find our critical values. And I say critical values because it is a two-tailed test, right? If it was only a right-tailed test or a left-tailed test, I'd, I'd be saying critical value, right? You'd only be finding one. All right, so here's the, again, the standard normal distribution. Now mean is zero, under the peak is zero. And then what we're looking for, remember alpha here was 5%. Alpha was 5%. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a value on the right and on the left, you know, because it's a two-tailed test, so that the area to the right of this right value, critical value, and the area to the left of this left critical value add up to 5%, meaning that this area here is 2.5%, so 0.025, you know, half of 5%. And then the area over here is also half of 5%, 0.025. So we're looking for this z-score. We're looking for the z-score with an area of 2.5% above it. So that's that z with a subscript of 0.025. And then this other critical value is the opposite of that, you know, negative z.025. Right. So I can find this with a calculator if I want. Remember that inverse norm? Second distributions inverse norm. And then the area I'm entering here is an area to the left. So if I want this, well, you know what? I could actually put in 0.025. This, if I put 0.025 here, it's going to give me this value, right? Because again, this is an area to the left on the calculator. So it's going to give me this left critical value with, you know, 2.5% to the left. And I mean 0 standard deviation 1. And then, you know, so this score over here, Right, see, this is the negative one, negative 1.96. You know, so then this score, the, the Z score with you know, 0.025 above it, is positive 1.96. And there's our critical values. Now, these areas, these, these little tails, the right and the left tail, the two tails with the area of 5% total, are our rejection regions. And let's see. Where does our 11.2 sample, the th no, our test statistic for that was 3.13? Where does that fall? Well, that's definitely bigger than 1.96. You know, 3.13 is over here in the rejection region. So our test statistic is in one of these rejection regions. That means we are going to reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis was that the mean was equal to 10 years. So we're rejecting that. All right, we're going to say no. And if we reject the null hypothesis, all right, if you reject the null hypothesis, that means you're supporting the uh, alternate hypothesis. And that was the claim, right? That was the claim. So that means I'm supporting the claim. The evidence that I have in front of me supports this claim that the average number of years a child is in foster care is not 10. 
All right, so let's go through. Now that was an entire hypothesis test, all the steps. And I do, the, and you do the same steps every single time. You run a hypothesis test. All right, so let's run through here and fill in all this stuff. Now the null hypothesis was that you know mu equals ten. The alternative hypothesis was that mu is not equal to ten. All right, then I think they have like an interactive part where you're moving some dots around on a on a graph of a normal distribution to set up your rejection regions and whatnot. So remember we said this was a two-tailed test. So I move this dot down here to where there's two tails. Now the purple regions are our rejection regions. Uh, the significance level though was 5%. So I move this dot to change the significance level and you see it moved it over here. Now you see the z-scores? These are those critical values. Remember I said 1.96 and negative 1.96? There they are there. The entrance to these critical value regions, the rejection regions. And you see alpha over two, the, this area is half of alpha, you know, two and a half percent, and then you got two and a half percent area over here for a total of five, a total of alpha. All right, now, and what was the sample size, right? It said 30, 30 kids, right? Perfect. The sample mean for those 30 was 11.2, right? X bar was 11.2. Okay, uh, what was mu? Remember, mu was what's assumed to be the mean of the population from the null hypothesis, and that was mu equals 10, 10.0, 10. And then what was sigma, right? And again, that was something that was given to us. Uh, they said sigma, the population standard deviation, was known to be 2.1 years. So move that to 2.1. Okay, and then look, see our test statistic 3.13, exactly what I said on my paper earlier when I did the calculations myself. And you can very clearly see the test statistic falls in the rejection region. It is too far away, you know, our, so our sample mean was way, is too far away from the population, uh, from the, this assumed population mean, for that to be a good assumption, that's probably a bad assumption. Then, and we're going to reject it. We're going to reject that the mean is 10 years, and then you know, lean more toward the alternative where the mean is not 10 years. All right, we'll support that. All right, so again, the test. Now you just got to enter what they have here you know, after you move all the stuff to the proper places. The test statistic we saw was 3.13. And the critical values, now they said if you have two critical values, you got one, you got to use this plus or minus symbol. Because there are two of them here, plus or minus 1.96. Now again, if it's a right tail test, it'll just be a positive. If it's a left tail test, it'll just be a negative. So I moved all the stuff in the right places, filled in the right test statistic, the right critical values. And then you got to make a conclusion. Right? I said we're in the rejection region, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis and then the, then the conclusion is about the claim. The conclusion is about that statement that the mean number of years is not 10, is different from 10. And I said we're rejecting the claim. Uh, we're, I'm sorry, we rejected the null hypothesis, so we are supporting the claim. We're supporting that alternative hypothesis. So I, that's this last one here. Reject the null, and there is strong evidence to conclude that the average amount of time a child spends in foster care system is different than 10 years. That was the claim. That was the alternative hypothesis. We are, we are supporting that. We're concluding that because we rejected that the mean was equal to 10. And submit. And great. And again, read through your answer explanations, of course, you know, just to make sure the reasoning's right. And also, if you got it wrong, you know, to hopefully see where you went wrong. And next time you see a problem like that, you know, do better. All right, and hopefully these couple videos on this objective, uh, these problems help you when you're doing your own. And thank you very much for watching.